Hello, this is Bev, Clarko Vision, and here is another video. Uh, thanks for coming back, and here's a little Saturday afternoon update I thought I would just put out here. Um, I've managed to land another couple of um, interesting 80s little gems, shall we say, again in the vinyl. Um, but before we get to that, I also have, I've got a DVD and a couple of CDs to show, which I'll, I will start off with the DVD, I think. So, um, I picked this up as a, a just kind of a, a random um, buy. I've, I'm aware of this band, I know of them, I've heard a couple of their songs a while ago and from memory I thought uh, they sounded quite good and I was going to go back and check them out at some point and I was just browsing Amazon spotted this at a very good price I think it was their last one they had in stock which is possibly why the price was down so I decided to just order it um, and the band is Angra um, one of Brazil's um, main heavy metal bands of modern times, I guess. Um, I believe they established in about 1991. Um, and um, yeah, they are from Brazil. And I, as I say, this is the first thing I own from this band. I've never owned anything from them before. Um, and I put it on uh, the other week and I was very impressed with uh, the um, the concert. This is their Angels Cry 20th Anniversary Tour, if you can see that down there. Um, so obviously this was to celebrate 20 years, so I'm guessing it would be around about... Hmm... Yeah, that would be right. This it says it was live in Sao Paulo on the 25th of August 2013. So let me just check. According to Wikipedia, right, it says they formed in 1991, but uh, how accurate that is, I'm not sure. So it was about then. But um, yeah. So perhaps their first release was in 1993. Um, so yeah, it's in one of these super dual case things. Um, rather than the, the standard DVD case. Um, you get a nice booklet with it as well. And what I didn't really realise off the top of my head either is, I can just get this out for a minute because I might need it to check on people's names. Um, <coughs> obviously you get live pictures and uh, some good stuff here. Loads of good uh, stuff. So here's the bit. Yeah, um, it tells you the people here. Um, I'll I'll say their names. Not I won't pronounce their names correctly. So forgive me. But apparently, um, one of the long time guitar players in this band, Kiko Luriero, who's the guitar one of the guitarists. He actually has left Angra now, and he's now playing with Megadeth. He's a uh, Mustaine's guitar man, besides himself, um, which is this chap here. <coughs> um, what a guitar player he is, he's absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, classically trained, <laughs> that pretty much says it all. Um, so what this band's style is, I would say, is power metal, modern heavy metal, power metal mix, bit of um, neoclassical and infused stuff um, and they have special guests on this disc as well uh, one of them being Tara Turnden, former Nightwish they have Uli John Roth who guests they have this group here um, called Familia Lima who are kind of like a strings kind of um, group who, you know, violins and stuff like that, and uh, they add a bit of the orchestral uh, elements to some of the tracks that you get on this. And this chap here, 
Hey, sorry, we're going this way. That's really wrong. This lad, um, oh god, I can't pronounce his name either. It's Amilcar Cristofaro. I beg your pardon if I've got that wrong. He is a drummer from some other Brazilian band, I think. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, he says it on the the thing, but yeah, um, it doesn't tell you right here where he's, what band he's actually in, but I think it's another well-known Brazilian band. But anyway, he guests on one of the songs as well. Um, but yeah, just really very, very talented group of musicians here. Um, they have two guitar players and they're both excellent. This is the other guy, the founder, Raphael Bittencourt. Um, super guitar players. Um, very accomplished musicians. And so, yes, I really enjoyed this. Very glad I bought it. Um, a really enjoyable watch and the music was really good as well. Um, so if you haven't seen um, Angra or heard Angra before, I can recommend this as a starting point if you can find it. Um, if it's around anywhere, do pick it up. Um, it's run time 126 minutes, so you're getting a good two hours almost uh, of stuff. Um, so that was the first. Um, next up, I've got two CDs here. And I must give another shout out again. I very, very um, much appreciated um, gift sent to me from Matt Weir, who lives not far from me, just a further a bit up the road. Um, he he actually messaged me and he said one day he was going to the the Ghost concert at uh, Glasgow, they were just, they just on their UK tour not too long ago and he was going to the show in Glasgow and he says, do you want a t-shirt? <laughs> I says, no. I says, well yes, I'd like a t-shirt. I says, but no, you've done more than enough already. I says, so don't bother, please. And lo and behold, what shows up in the mail? A box with a t-shirt and he popped in a couple of CDs as well, which are, first of all, <laughs> Um, this is the new album from the band Hailstorm. Again, I don't have anything by Hailstorm. It's another band I know of, but I never really looked into too much. Uh, never really checked out their style. They're kind of a modern hard rock. They're a US band, hard rock, kind of alternative sort of style about them, I thought. I wasn't sure if they were kind of proper, I don't mean proper, I mean as in traditional rock and metal, you know, um, they had a little bit of that alternative sound, um, I thought anyway, um, f just by going on what I heard on this album, because this is, as I say, it's the first thing I've ever owned from them, first time I've really given them a proper listen. Um, uh, it was good, uh, very good. I'm not sure if it's quite my thing. Um, I it wasn't the worst thing I've ever heard. I just you know I'm not sure if it's my kind of taste, my style. Um, but for what it was, I thought it was a very good album. Um, some good songs on it. Very good vocalist is Lizzie Hale. I believe she and her brother uh, formed the band back in the day. And I had no idea they were releasing a, a new album. So um, this is this is it, Back From The Dead. Um, unfortunately, there's a little crack here which makes the cover come off. Um, but I can, I've can i got dual case spares, so I'm going to get that sorted shortly. And there's the CD there. So yes, um, that was a very pleasant surprise and it was nice to hear another band. And the other one he sent me, um, another band I've never heard of before, um, at least I don't think I heard of them before. And then once I realised who they were, or yeah, once I checked out and became aware of who they were, I wasn't sure if either Matt or somebody else has mentioned to me before about them. But this band is called Control the Storm. I believe... Um, if memory serves me right, is this 
their second album, maybe, or is it their third? Um, they do have something else out. Just trying to check on the internet here. Um, but anyway, what they are is they are a UK band. They're described as melodic metal. And they're from Bristol in the UK. Um, and originally, um, Becky Baldwin, who plays bass for the other UK band Fury these days, um, which I have lots of their albums of because they're another great traditional, uh, new wave of traditional metal band. She used to be a bass player, uh, the bass player in this band, but um, she's now in Fury. Um, this is a female fronted band as well. And uh, so yeah, after finding out they're from Bristol, um, and this is self-released. Um, it's they're, again they're another band like Fury. I don't think they're signed, but so this is self-released, and it's an excellent piece of work. I really enjoyed this. Um, described as melodic metal, I would also say they were kind of power metalish, and. In places, a little bit symphonic, but not not full on symphonic. Just hints of it here and there, um, but yeah, very melodic indeed. Power metal, um, and the vocalist, the female, um, she's a really good voice. She's got a, again. I'll probably get her name wrong, but her name is um, I think Feruzi. Feruzi. It's F I R. O U Z E H is her uh, first name. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, really um, good. And the rest of the band members, excellent. Again, really talented bunch of guys here. Um, so, I do encourage you to check them out, people, if you want to support more uh, new and unsigned British bands. They have a band camp, do check them out. And Matt, I didn't know that they even had a CD out. So this is from 2019, this record, this second release. So uh, hopefully they'll be bringing out something new fairly soon. I believe they've got a new single out because um, I've just now followed them on Facebook as well. So brilliant stuff. So that was the two CDs and the ghost t-shirt. Matt completely surprised me unnecessary but so appreciated um i really do appreciate you thinking of me and love the t-shirt um because the tour dates on the back and everything like that so um yeah so on to the vinyl um 13 minutes in <laughs> right let's try and get on with this you know me i like a good ramble um i was on ebay and just happened to spot a very nice, very, very nice condition copy of a seven inch single. Uh, and it's just the standard UK release for this single. Um, I do have a copy of this standard UK release, um, which my cousin gave to me back in the day. Um, but uh, it's a little bit worn, a few surface scratches and um, the sleeve is a, a bit worn around the edges and stuff so um, I just decided to grab this because it was nice and cheap and this is in excellent condition uh, and this is my if I've got it right this is my 15th copy of Love Bites by Def Leppard <laughs> um, if those, if some of you watched Cloudy Milder recently, he was shown his Anthrax um, single that he has the most copies of. Was it Make Me Laugh or something like that? Apologies if I've got it wrong, but I think he's got something like 11 or 12 copies of that. Um, which kind of always makes me think of this one, you know, this is the single I have the most copies of and there's no reason for it whatsoever. It just happened that way. I just picked them up whenever I came across them. So I thought I would add this because this is a lovely condition copy. 
1987 original UK LEP 5 um, covers in lovely condition the records in immaculate condition as well um, really nice Billy's got a gun live on the back side so I was very pleased and as it happens when I was adding this to my discogs it turns out it is a different pressing <laughs> from the other single that I got that my cousin gave me so it's, it's actually a different um, version if you like even though it's the, the same standard UK release um, the other one I have is the MPO pressing. This one is the Damont or the Damont pressing, which is just differences. It just means it was different pressing plants they came from, I believe. I think that's what that means. Sort of do with the the matrix stuff and the dead wax. But anyway, so that was that. Um, <clears throat> right, onto the 80s gems. Um, New wave of British heavy metal band found this one, Clovenhoof. Um, you'll probably most be familiar with the name, if not, that they came out in the the new wave of British heavy metal um, time, early 80s. Um, this is their third album, third release, Dominator, from 1988. Um, which... Um, I happen to think this is a really good album. It's kind of a it's an it's a concept album, I believe, and it's it tells you up here roughly what it's meant to be. It says from the heart of a dying subatomic world came mankind's enslaver, genetic engineers in their utopian search for the perfect organic life form created a hell of their own making, ruled by the dominator. So it kind of sounds like something. Like what happened in Terminator, the movies, you know, they created a machine and everything went wrong, sort of thing. So um, this is kind of the, the, the idea behind this concept album, I believe. And the, that must be the Dominator there on the cover. She's got the 80s hair right enough, so... <coughs> so yeah, 1988 in lovely condition. Um... It's released on, it's it uh, made in Germany, but it's for the UK market on Heavy Metal Records. The inner, it's just a inner sheet with lyrics and credits and stuff here, which is immaculate. There's not a mark, a stain, it's not even faded, it's still crispy white. <coughs> and just a plain... And the record itself is in beautiful condition, Bar barely a mark, it looks minty fresh to be honest. So there's your heavy metal records and uh, yeah, Clovenhoof's Dominator from 88. Fantastic stuff and I really enjoy it. The, the songs on here are pretty good. And I'm listening to it this morning though and I'm thinking the production sounds a little bit... I don't know if it's the production or the mixing or what, but it sounded a little bit as if it could be better, you know, as if all the instruments weren't clear as sounding as they should, but I don't know, but it's still good enough to listen to. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy to land that one. The next one was a something I knew absolutely nothing about and again this was me I was just browsing eBay and came across this so I went on to YouTube to check it out I thought that actually sounds not too bad so um, again it's a UK band um, and they are uh, from let me get this right here um, allegedly they're from Birmingham um, <clears throat> and they only ever released one album. They had a demo tape and then followed by this one album, which is not a studio album, it's a live recording, and this was their only ever output. <clears throat> so it's a band called Surface, who later changed the name to Beneath the Surface. Um, and the album here is titled Race the Night. 
Now, when um, this has been reissued a couple of times, but it's been released under Beneath the Surface, so um, this is the only version under Just Surface, uh, which is the original pressing. Race the Night, it's got a, a bit of damage from where a sticker once was, but um, apart from that, it's in really good condition. Interesting cover, I have to say, very interesting, shall we say. The back, there's the guys there, um, classic 80s looks. Um, and as you can see at the top, it says recorded live here. And it is, it's recorded somewhere live. Um, and it was mixed at AVM Studios Stafford House, Stoke on Trent, in February 1986. So this actually was released in 86, again, middle of the 80s, on Killer Watt record label. Uh, and it's just, there's no inner, it's just a plain inner sleeve. And the record itself is in lovely condition, very nice condition indeed. Um, hardly any signs of wear. It's your killer what label. And so yeah, um, it's just a classic 80s hard rock band, kind of a little bit of the new wave of British heavy metal style in there, but not as heavy metal, they're more hard rock sounding, but um, just that classic 80s sound. Um, really quite good stuff. So I don't know what happened to this band, what the deal was, why they never ended up with a studio album of sorts and this came out as a live album. But So it was, and it was super cheap, um, it cost me more for the postage than it did for the record, so I wasn't going to complain. Um, certainly if it was pretty decent. So that's Surface, UK band from Birmingham and Race the Night. Recorded live. Quite an enjoyable listen. Um, this one, I was already hunting for it. Um, when I discovered the Spanish band Banzai recently, and in a fairly recent video, a couple of videos ago, I showed their debut album that I picked up on CD. I was already hunting for looking at the rest of their catalogue. Um, and found a nice copy on Discogs from Spain um, and I so I ordered it. So this is a Discogs buy and here is Banzai's second album which is called, again forgive me people, Duro, po Duro Potente, apologies. Uh, I like the cover, I have to say it's got a Spanish flavour with the ghoul, obviously, um, and it's kind of a metal, mechanical, fierce looking thing. Um, so yeah, so this is Banzai's second album and it's absolutely tremendous, I love it. It's even better than the debut, I think, so um, there's the band there. I think for this one they have a different singer, and again, Renee, if you catch this, you might be able to uh, confirm that, but um, I think there's, there's a different vocalist on here. Um, but yeah, um, again, it's in lovely condition. Minor edge wear, um, just a little bit at the top, but it hasn't burst through. Just as if the records tried to get through at some point. Um, inner sleeve with lyrics. There are the boys there. Um, this one is from 1984 on Wea, W-E-A, Wea Records. Um, Spanish pressing, so there we have it. Um, the whole thing is in Spanish. Cara 1, Cara 2. I know you don't say 1 and 2 when you're speaking in Spanish, but um, yeah. So, but yeah, it's all... Um, and again, it's in excellent condition, very good plus, very, very little to speak of. There's a couple of light surface marks, but not a lot, so it's been very well looked after. Um, and I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. This is fantastic. If you can find this album anywhere, people, 
get it. It's just classic 80s heavy metal. Again, they split sing in Spanish, but uh, that does not matter. It's just great music, great stuff. Um, really enjoy it. Um, just love the guitars, love the tunes, the melodies. So I was so happy to find a copy of that. I think I might... You no, know, no, you might see me hunt down another one. But And the last one I've got here, guys, uh, I found this on eBay as well. It was a little bit pricey, but that's to be expected because it's from 1991. So I... Uh, found on vinyl a very nice copy of Psychotic Supper from Tesla which I do have on CD but I've always wanted to get a copy of this on vinyl um, an original pressing um, I really enjoy this album it's a very good Tesla album it's probably my favourite actually mainly for the song here, Song in Emotion I don't know how well you can read that, but it says to our friend Steve Steeman Clark. So yeah, they wrote this song for him and dedicated it to him when he died in 91. Um, and to this day, I've said this before, I think, but anyway, I'm saying it again. Um, it's the best tribute song there's ever been written for Steve. It's magic. Really fitting. Just ideal for him. The lyrics, the guitars, everything. So yeah, but um, not just that, it's a really good album. The only thing, the only mild irk about this, uh, and I think one or two others have said this about Tesla albums, is that it's a little bit on the long side. I can listen to just one side and feel I've had enough. Need to take a break um, and go back to the second side later. Um, the inner sleeve is in nice condition. There is a minor split on the bottom, but nothing um, upset about or anything. Um, credits, etc. Uh, you've got all sorts of folk in here, and in including Def Leppard are thanked in here. They did two of them uh, for their psychotic supper. Uh, and here is the record on Geffen Records uh, and again it's in absolutely lovely condition very little there's a slight mark surface mark on side one track one but it doesn't affect anything when it plays no sound issues um, but yeah so very pleased to get a hold of this um, and that is my little update, and I'm sorry <laughs> I've rambled on for almost half an hour again, guys. But um, yeah, I just like to talk about the stuff. Um, do check out the bands shown here. Um, if you find anything interesting, you should find these things interesting. <laughs> um, and I'll see you all in another video. I've got a pile of CDs that I uh, have got just in as well, so I may do another update fairly soon just showing them but anyway thanks for watching take care and i'll see you in another video bye just now